Hello and welcome back to West Navsbury again, this being episode two for want of a better description about progress on the new layout. Uh, really nice to see a couple of new subscribers on the back of the last video by the way, so welcome especially to you guys. Um, this time round I'm going to focus on the early planning stages of the layout as promised and then finish with a short update for April into May with some shots of the trains actually running round. OK, so as I mentioned in the previous video, any plans for the new layout had to fit over, under, and in some cases through obstacles that the attic conversion dictated. And in all honesty, my lack of woodwork skills and experience caused me to put off getting started for many months. In fact, when we first moved into the house, all I'd done is roughly worked out the length of layout I could potentially build and how tight some of the curves would be. Um, and I did this by simply measuring and placing boxed coaching stock on the floor. Throughout, I've worked on the assumption that 30 centimetres is a good rule of thumb for one coach length, with the benefit that, in the case of Mark 1 or 2 coach, you actually end up being pleasantly surprised, now a little bit shorter, uh, with a little extra space. But it's, it's always worth um, working to the longer length of a Mark 3 or 4 coach, I think, especially for clearances and so on. Anyway, in, in the case of my attic, I worked this out to leave me about 2.4 metres length for the layout before having to curve the track round um, at each end. And right from the offset, my intention was to hide the majority of the curves off scene because they would need to go down to almost a second radius curve, which I don't think ever looks quite realistic, especially with longer length or intercity express trains. So. I spent quite a bit of time then working out how much of the railway would be on scene and I was hopeful that this layout would enable me to run an in-city train of at least six or seven coaches and that I'd be able to accommodate that train within a similar length platform. Uh, this was going to be more than the four and a half coaches of the previous layout anyway and while that layout was a single track with passing loops through the station, the new layout, my intention was to have at least double track. Uh, you can see then from the early track plan scribbles that I, I hoped for maybe four platforms, um, a loop off the up and down lines respectively, and two crossovers. Uh, and if you look at the top of the plan, you'll see I was also trying to figure out how to work around the roof support. On the, on the picture I've scribbled BEAM with an exclamation mark afterwards, and I was planning to perhaps try and disguise this as a lift shaft or part of a bridge between the two platforms. But again, the 2.4 metre straight on scene allowed me to accommodate at least a six coach train with the ability to run a loco around and back on the other end. Now, I guess um, everyone will have a diff slightly different method, um, but for me, I think I needed to have enough of an idea of the final product to have something to plan towards. Um, so thinking with the kind of operations I would like to run, yet leaving the plan flexible enough to evolve as things are gradually tried out, because obviously plans always go wrong anyway. Um, so anyway, by the time I got to this point, um, my imagination and measuring everything else had been exhausted, and I now needed to actually start sketching things physically out in the room to be able to make a start. Okay, so um, I called this next bit surveying. Um, makes me sound like I know what I'm on about, but I definitely don't. Really, it's just more planning. So. I went down to uh, the timber shop, got uh, a couple of pieces of plywood, um, just to sort of get the lay of the land, see how things would um, fit into the room. And this piece of plywood here was just sort of wedged uh, between the apex of the roof and uh, the counterpart next to it on top of the ironing board, one of those well-known model railway supports. Um, what this did enable me to do in all seriousness, though, was, was to see uh, physically what what the layout would start to look like at a given height, um, the amount of room that the coaching and the loco stock would take up, and thus the amount of space that would be available for me. Other things which I used to help um, were some lengths of flexi track, which I could actually use for the layout. And also in the background, you can see some bits of set track, uh, second radius curves, which I had no intention of using, but they provided a really useful guide as to the minimum radius I was going to uh, use on the layout. Physically placing um, things onto the boards gave me uh, the opportunity to see how much room I had. And, um, uh, you know, various other plans followed, including this rather overly ambitious um, proposal for five platforms and three tracks all the way around. But it's always best not to be overly ambitious sometimes with these. I think that track plan, with hindsight, much though it would have been fun to operate, um, is too much for the amount of space I have available. 
And finally, the elephant in the room, before I could even think about fixing any baseboards anywhere, was this roof support beam, which I've mentioned so many times. And it was quite clear that that was the first thing that had to go before I could even start putting any baseboards up. And here you can see a few pictures um, as the boring, the excavation took place. And there's something of a tradition in my family anyway that involves demolishing part of one's house in the process of building a model railway. So that was it really in terms of the planning and surveying, as I call it, um, stage. Having bored that hole through the attic, I was now free to confront my main challenge, which was to construct a level flat baseboard around the periphery of the whole room. But more on that uh, next time. For now, I'll leave you with a few shots of the trains running um, as part of my April-May update. Uh, hope to see you again next time, perhaps. <laughs>